involved. So we're delighted. I'm going to read a quick little bio for people who don't know you from the screen. So give me one second. Reverend Dr. Paul Hasselbeck is a rock star in the unity movement, widely regarded as the leading authority on metaphysics. For 10 years, he was the Dean of Instruction for Spiritual Education and Enrichment Program. Paul brings his joyful and passionate presence to his classes and presentations both nationally and internationally. He's the author of nine books, Heart-Centered Metaphysics, A Deeper Look at Unity Teachings, is the main text for teaching of metaphysics by Unity Worldwide Spiritual Institute. Paul challenges students with a lively and engaging style and infectious enthusiasm. Paul often makes a difficult subject impossibly fun, and we've seen that from you before. So shut down my slides, let you open yours, and welcome. We're thrilled to have you. Well, thank you. I am delighted to be here. Um, I have trouble talking and doing something on the screen at the same time. So I'm going to, er, there we go. Okay. There we are. And let me share screen, the slideshow, current slide, and one more button. There we go. We're ready to go. <laughs> So thank you, Unity of Kitchener and Unity of Ottawa. I apologize for, for not remembering that you guys are doing it together. So I will remember that in the future. So you might want to get out your cell phones. You might want to take a picture, have it set on camera. You might want to take a picture of one or more of my slides. You're certainly welcome to do so. And so sit back and relax like my my little friend there on the couch. And here is some information you might want to take a picture of. My website is paulhasselbeck.com. Our podcast is metaphysicalromp2.com. And my email address is alberthasselbeck at gmail.com. And I'm excited to share with you that we recently found out that Metaphysical Romp 2 is number 16 of all podcasts in the world. It's like, what? That's like a, and we're delighted people are listening. And so joy of limitation. This is actually one of my favorite subjects because I think it messed with sometimes the way we think as, as unity people, we think ourselves as free and unlimited and we've actually we have that song from the past, I'm free and I am unlimited. Wow, that is true. However, to have anything specific in this world, including our thoughts, our feelings, and the things, we must use limitation. So let's begin with this affirmation. I am wondrously infinite in finite ways. I am wondrously infinite in finite ways. So we have the infinite unlimited, which we are, we could call that our divinity, and we have the finite limited. So we have the idea, the concept, that at the same time, we are fully divine and fully human. And these are not distinct separate things. They are, so it's sort of like a paradox, isn't it? So I always like to do a, a review in the beginning, especially with a topic like this. God is not a being or entity. God does not change. God is not opposed. In other words, there is no devil. So there's not this being that's a devil and this being that's God that are warring together. And eventually God is going to win. No, nope. no devil. So one of my favorite definitions from Charles begins with the word mind because God is mind. By the, by the term mind, we mean God, the universal principle, which includes all principles. And the wondrous and fabulous thing about this quote, 
we have three words here mind god and principle which are synonyms so god is principle and principle is made up of faculties and laws or divine ideas and laws or principles and laws because here's a big tip if you're reading unity books principle power and divine idea are synonyms and you actually used another synonym and that synonym is spiritual substance so spiritual substance is principle spiritual substance is power spiritual substance is divine idea all of those are synonyms so eric butterworth once said god is spirit present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time and here again we have another synonym spirit for god so god is principle present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time we could also say god is substance present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time so let me give you a little bit of information here that maybe you'll bring this home in a better way the average human whoever that is i mean i don't want to be average i hope you don't want to be average but the average human has something like 37.2 trillion cells in their body so we have 37 trillion bells excuse me cells in our body that means the entirety of the divine is in each and every one of our cells and if you think of what a cell is it has a nucleus and so there is this entirety of god in the nucleus and the substance the plasma whatever you want to call it around it every point in space and time has the entirety of god In an unpublished work, worker's talk, Charles once said, if you can conceive that all that mind is right at hand for your use, all ideas or principles can be grasped and used by you. And the trick here is learning the names of these divine ideas or principles. And the more you know, the more you can consciously bring to your mind the more you can use it consciously. And then one of my favorite writers, E.V. Ingraham, said, you already have all the power there is. Just think about that for a minute. Each of us has all the power there is. And every cell has all the power there is. You have had the power to demonstrate disease in the face of omnipresent health, poverty in the presence of inexhaustible substance. That's how powerful you and I are. And he went on to say, this has all been brought about by the formulated thoughts and decrees of the thinking self. And today we would say, this has all been brought about by the formulated thoughts or decrees of the thinking, feeling self. Because over time, through science actually, and through feeling our experience, we realize that every thought comes with a feeling and every feeling sort of comes with a thought. And Charles said, if we send power out, by our thought and word in hate, it destroys. But if we send it out in love, it builds. I've often said, you will never, never regret being kind. And equally, you will never regret being love or being loving. 
We send out power. We, we send power out by our thought and feeling and word and hate if it destroys. But if we send it out in love, it builds. Amazing. So divine ideas or principles are potential forces waiting to be set in motion through proper formative vehicles. The thinking and feeling faculties in us are such vehicles. So these divine ideas, these principles really don't have the agency we thought that God that was an entity or a deity have. They are simply pure potential. And we tap into that potential. We tap in. We tap in to our divinity through our thinking and feeling natures. So we have the infinite unlimited divine ideas and we have the finite limited. How do we go from one to the other? Well, that's through our thought, feeling, and word. Through our thought, feeling, and word, we, we, we take an infinite idea or an idea that has infinite potential. Even an ordinary idea like gardening, we take that idea and, and make it limited make it more finite, and that makes it more useful. We must learn the law of expression from the abstract to the concrete, from the formless to the form. And once we know this, and once we know what substance is, we can joy joyfully limit it. So we go from the abstract and formless, we limit that, in some way to the con concrete and formed, and of course, into manifestation. So we could have principle, divine idea, or power, or I could add substance up there. And then we, we limit, we define, we focus, we, we form, we refine that principle, that substance to our power of our thought and feeling, we have an expression, we have a feeling nature of it within our mind and bodies, and then we are propelled to action for manifestation beyond the body. So we go once again from the infinite to the finite, and the way we do that is we use the divine ideas of desire and choice. And if you're a fan of the 12 powers like I am, desire would be the power of love and choice would be the power of will. And so desire and will drives this process of moving from the, the, the infinite to the finite. And that whole process is the process of limitation. So here's another way of looking at it. We go from the unformed to the form, from the infinite to the finite. And so infinite potential is made up of all ideas. We can have the idea of a table, which is more specific than all ideas. And then through the power of our thought and feeling, we can come up with a specific idea and then we can go shopping for the actual table or if we're clever enough, we can build the actual table. I remember once when I moved in, into a new condo, I needed something for my books. And so what's that idea? It's an idea of a bookshelf. And then I had to make it specific in my consciousness how long it is, how tall it is, and then shop for the materials to cut it and build it. So that all begins through the action of our thought, feeling, and the power of our word. So we go from the infinite, unlimited, to the finite and limited, through the power of our thought, 
feeling and word. Here's another way of looking at it again. We, we could have, we always have infinite potential. That's every one of the divine ideas and every one of the laws there are, are everywhere present in their entirety at every point in space at the same time, at every one of your cells and more. And so we could say, if we want to decide how we're going to show up, in a particular day, we move from the infinite potential to mind idea, to the Christ idea, which is made up of the 12 powers. And then what are you choosing and desiring to be? Because you will be limiting those, those 12 powers and maybe more through the law of expression to something very specific in your consciousness from which you can act and show up. So, once we know that, we can have joy, the joy of limitation, just like I have the joy of my infinite potential, because both exist as a unity, as oneness. I am wondrously infinite in finite ways, and feel the truth of that, because you couldn't exist if the infinite divine was not being limited in your consciousness through your thoughts and feelings. So how are you going to show up today? And so friends, thank you for listening. And that is the joy of limitation. And so, friends, now is our time for meditation. And I hope you're all comfortable. I am. But even though I'm comfortable, often I have to kind of wiggle around in my chair. Maybe you have to do that. Kind, kind of. That's a process by which I settle my body down to be present. And I'll take off my glasses, even though I'm going to close my eyes. Take a deep breath and release it. Take a deep breath and release it. And one more time, take a deep breath and release it. And probably like me, you felt you you felt yourself Settle down even more as we begin to focus our attention on these wonderful ideas, these wonderful concepts that make up what we call the unity teachings. We are at once in the same time, infinite and finite. One of the ways we more consciously access the infinite is through meditation. And for me, meditation is the process by which I synchronize my humanity with my divinity. And why do we do that? Well, I do it so I can be more conscious of my divinity and your divinity and all of divinity at the same time. You are, I am, infinite potential. The divine, spirit, God, substance, principle, divine idea. All
all of that, all of those terms are synonyms of the divine, of God. And for me, all these terms help me to know how I limit the infinite in order to show up in this world as finite. We are using those divine ideas to manifest ourselves in this present moment. And so if you don't like how you're showing up in this moment, you can remember your divinity and remember that you can joyously limit that infinite potential to something more specific that you like, that you want to be. And then who you are as a human. And so, friends, repeat after me. I am fully divine. I am fully human. Again, now let's say it together. I am fully divine. I am fully human. I am fully divine. I am fully human. And so you are, and so I am, and so it is. Amen. And then take another deep breath, become more aware aware of right where you are. <sighs> Thank you, and amen.